Today I'm sharing my crochet and knitting bucket list and I have six different projects that I cannot wait to share with you all. came up with this bucket list when my good friend Don from the YouTube channel Don's Days tagged me in a challenge called Top 6. The premise of the challenge was to come up with your top six. <laughs> Why can't I remember what I was going to say? The premise of the challenge was to come up with your top six crochet and knitting projects and that got my wheels turning because I had never really written out a bucket list before now. Cannot wait to share these projects with you. I am so excited about them and I have to be honest, one of these is not a crocheting or knitting project but it falls under the umbrella of what I love to do and I think you guys are really going to like it too. You're going to find links for all the patterns in the description box below but I want to know what your bucket list is. So please, after the video is over, comment below and let me know what your top six, top 10, top three crochet and knitting projects are. I cannot wait to hear from you all and make sure to check out everybody else's because I think this will be so much fun. So the first project on my bucket list is Frida's Flowers from the designer Janie Crow. This actually was a crochet along in 2016 that Janie Crow made for Star Stylecraft, the yarn company. It is a totally free pattern, which is amazing. The entire inspiration for the blanket, as you can probably guess from the name, was the Mexican artist Frida Kahlo. And Janie Crow wrote actually in the pattern all about how she was so inspired by the beautiful artwork of Frida Kahlo and also the tenacious and strong spirit that Frida Kahlo had. Janie was also very inspired by Mexican embroidery and all of the bright and bold colors that are in traditional Mexican textiles. And you can really see that with each one of the blocks. So I actually started this pattern a couple of years ago and I've gotten stalled and I feel so guilty about it and it's something that I want to return to. I've actually made three of the different blocks but there are seven in total and each block gets a little bit more elaborate. So this one is the very first one and it is a beautiful little Cosmo flower. And then you move on to this blue one and it is so gorgeous. I love it so much. This is the third block and it just goes on from there and they get more and more more intricate and more beautiful. It was a little overwhelming for me and I really want to return to this. One of the best resources out there is a set of tutorial videos that a woman here on YouTube has done and I will leave a link for it in the description box below. This sweet lady went through and did a tutorial for each one of the blocks and I found it was extremely helpful for me. Even though the patterns are really well written and there are a lot of good photos in it, I still needed a little bit of help. I I actually used the recommended yarn, which is the Stylecraft Classic Cotton DK. Let me say that one more time. <laughs> Stylecraft Classic Cotton DK. I don't know why that's so hard for me to say, but you'll find a link for that yarn in the description box below as well. Can you guess what my next project is on my crochet and knitting bucket list? This might give you a hint. And if not, this is a sock blocker. I finally want to learn how to knit socks. It looks like so much fun. And so actually what I've done is I have enrolled in a sock course from Knitography Farm. So I actually did a course from her all about stranded knitting and I will actually show you the cowl that I made. It is so gorgeous. Let me get it out for you. I still have to weave in a couple of ends, but you can see how beautiful this cowl is. I learned so much from taking Patricia's class and she focuses mostly on traditional Norwegian knitting. She's actually an American woman who has lived in Norway for a really long time and she has a sheep farm there in Norway, which just sounds like the most amazing life ever. But I decided to take her Selbu sock course and I am so excited about it. And now I just need to actually make the the time to start knitting these wonderful socks. A few of my good friends who are amazing knitters told me that this class may be a little bit challenging and to start with color work socks is probably a little bit much. I should have started with something a little bit simpler but you know what I dove right in and I am starting with these socks so wish me luck but I ordered her yarn as well. This yarn is actually from her actual sheep. What's interesting about this yarn is that it's not very soft 
and I was a little bit concerned about it until I talked to one of my good friends, Julie from the Button Jar Studio, and she actually knit one of the sweaters from Knitography Farm and took one of her classes as well, and she used this traditional Norwegian wool, and she said it actually softens up quite a bit as you work with it, so I'm excited to use this yarn. Since I ordered her, yikes. <laughs> Since I ordered the sock kit with the yarn, it also came with this cute little, what are these called? It came with this cute little stitch marker that she had made, which is her actual Selbu sock design, which I think is super, super cute. I also decided that I wanted to have the sock blockers and I got them in two different sizes. I got one for my size and then I got one for my husband's size. So I think they're beautiful. So I'm really glad to have them and I've hung them on my wall and they're beautiful and decorative, but they're also going to be really helpful when I actually start knitting these socks. But this is something that I really, really want to do this year. I want to learn how to knit socks. My only fear is that everyone I know who starts knitting socks gets super addicted to it and that's all they want to do. So I'm a little afraid, but I think I'm going to start anyway really, really soon because I have everything ready. I just need to make the time. So my next project on my crafting bucket list actually isn't necessarily a project. It's more or a goal of mine, and that is to do more designing. So I've done a handful of designs in the past, but I've never considered myself a designer. I always consider myself a maker. I love to make things from other people's patterns, but I've actually, in the last month or two, I have started getting all of these ideas for my own patterns. They've literally been bubbling up from I don't know where. So I've started working on a couple of designs, and they're definitely in the prototype stage right now and the first one is this little piggy right here and of course he's completely naked right now he does have some little underwear on thankfully I'm actually working on his clothes right now but I am really enjoying coming up with this little guy and it's something that I really want to explore more and even if I never put the patterns out and I just make them for me it's something that I want to keep doing but I'm really hoping that you guys like him he needs a little tail but he's got his little shoes on in socks and I'm knitting his him a beautiful sweater and some little shorts and he is actually going to be a crocheted and knitted combined project. I love the look of crocheted toys but I love the look of knitted clothing for those toys. I'm combining the two and we'll see how it goes and if it turns out okay I'll share the pattern with you guys as well. Now the other design that I have going on is for some little dishcloths and they're little granny squares with a floral motif on them and these are definitely in the prototype stage as well. I have actually three different design totals for these washcloths. I'm using the Natura Just Cotton for these dishcloths and I love Natura Just Cotton. It is really soft. I do have joint issues when I'm using certain cottons but this one seems to be okay and I think because I'm using granny squares and the stitches don't need to be super tight, they can be loose, that works for me. So I love all of these gorgeous colors that I have going on together. They are just so pretty. Let me see if I can stack them all on top of one another. Let's see. Yay, there we go. I think they are so beautiful all together. If this design comes out like I'm hoping it will, I will be sharing the pattern with you guys hopefully soon. It's something on my bucket list to get this done in a relatively short amount of time. Ah! So the next project on my bucket list is the Sven and <laughs> Sven and Solvig Sven and Solvig Scandinavian Knitted Friends. How adorable is this little couple? I love this pattern so very much. And the very first time I ever saw it was on the Instagram account, Lori Times 5. If you're not following Lori, I will leave a link for her Instagram account in the description box below because, oh my gosh, she has the most amazing, beautiful projects that she works on as well as her photography, her travel, you can really tell that she is a true artist and she teaches knitting around the world and I literally love every single thing that she does. And when I reached out to her to see if she would allow me to share her beautiful photos of her Sven and Solvig dolls, she said yes, but also she wanted to tell me a little story about them as well and I thought this was really amazing. So apparently this pattern was written back in the 80s and the popularity of it had kind of 
kind of died out until she found this pattern somehow and knitted it and shared it and all of these people were like, ah, I want to knit these beautiful Fair Isle dolls. They're so gorgeous. And the designer's daughter reached out and just said that her mother was thrilled to know that this pattern had resurfaced and people were knitting it again. The designer is in her 80s now. I just thought that was really beautiful. Also, the Barrett Wool Company sold a kit with the pattern and the yarns and all the things that you need to knit these adorable dolls. Now, they are currently out of stock, but I put my email in to get updated when they get a new stock of it because I really do want to knit this pattern. It looks very challenging, I will admit, but since I took the stranded knitting course from Patricia from Knitography Farm, I feel a little bit more confident with Fair Isle. So how cute are they? The next project on my bucket list is from this book, Knit Like a Latvian. I saw this book, I don't even know how long ago, and when I saw it, I knew that this was something that I had to do. I love all of these gorgeous designs, and they are mostly mittens and fingerless mitts. They use so many beautiful, bold colors in Latvian knitting, and the geometric shapes combined with those color combinations is absolutely striking. It's so gorgeous. One of my goals is to knit my husband a pair of mittens. I want you to knit these for me. My poor husband has nothing handmade from me and I really, really want to learn how to make something for him and I'll show you the exact pattern that I want to do for him. I love these winter sun mittens and I think that he would really like them and what I love about them is that although there's definitely different motifs of flowers and things like that, it doesn't look super feminine. It looks masculine. I know that choosing these kind of colors, he would love them so very much and I think I would really enjoy working on them. The last project on my bucket list is actually not crocheted or knitted. It is little felt sewing project, but there is a crochet connection. This ornament collection was designed by Alicia Paulson. <laughs> Alicia Paulson. Alicia Paulson. Paulson. <laughs> Alicia Paulson of Posey Gets Cozy, and they are the coziest little ornaments I have ever seen. But the reason why I included these is because when I started out on this creative journey that started several years ago, which I've talked about before, I'll give you the short version in case this is your first time here. I went through a really difficult time. My son's health was really bad about four or five years ago or so, and I was in desperate need of a creative outlet to help me with stress. And I was searching on Pinterest one day in this beautiful granny square crib blanket just jumped right off of the computer into my face. And I thought, oh, I have to make that. Turns out it is a design by Alicia Paulson. As I've become more familiar with her work, I love everything she does. And these little ornaments just make me so very happy. So I want to show you all of them. She has the different patterns that you can buy all the time. And then she will come out with an actual kit that comes with all the supplies. So the first one is the night before Christmas. I think these are so adorable. There's the little mouse and a snowflake and a little girl in her bed with her little kitty cat at the end of the bed. How adorable is that? The next one is her winter cabin ornament set pattern. Oh, this reminds me of Little House on the Prairie with the little window and the candle in the window and the pretty little curtains and the snowflakes all around and the beautiful bird and the cute little teapot with the gorgeous embroidery. I just want to make them all. The next one is the sweet home ornament set pattern and I love this one too. There's a beautiful little candle and then a gorgeous arched doorway. Then you have a sweet little bunny rabbit. I love bunny rabbits. So cute. And the next one is the snow day ornament set pattern. How gorgeous is that beautiful red coat? I love all the details. I actually would love to have a coat that looks exactly like that. And then she has the cute little mittens. Oh, how adorable is that? And then she has the sweet little pole bear as well. The next one is her walk in the woods ornament and look how gorgeous with the Christmas tree and the sweet little cozy cabin there and the pretty little deer. I just love it so very much. And finally the ice skating afternoon ornament. Oh my gosh look at that with the beautiful teacup and the little lady who looks like she must be a very good baker. And finally the cute little ice skate. I just think these are all so adorable. I want to make them all and have them on my Christmas tree. But Alicia Paulson actually does have some crocheted and knitted patterns on her site as well. So make sure to check it out. And she has a beautiful, gorgeous blog where she shares
shares about her life and her gorgeous photography and everything. I just love it so much. Don't forget to share your bucket list with me in the comment section below. I want to hear all about the projects that you want to be working on in the future. And as always, thank you for spending a little bit of time with me today. Please hit that like button, that subscribe button, and the bell notification to know when I publish a new video. Stay safe out there and happy stitching.